Never eat an acorn just off the ground. If it comes from a red oak, then forget it. It is bitter. White oaks produce um, more of a, a, a tasteful acorn that you don't need to process. But squirrels are immune to this stuff, I've learned. Now, how does this relate to the Christian? How does this relate to the Christian? Jot this down. How does this nut relate to the Christian? It requires preparation so it can better nourish people. That acorn is, is edible, it's good, but it has to go through a process as we do. When first picked, it is best to lay the acorns out in the sun to dry. Why? Because it kills any bugs or in insects or larvae growing in them. Sun drying acorns also reduces mold problems. Okay? So here it is. Here's the, the illustration and, and the example. We, we need to lay out in the sun, S-O-N, in order to get rid of the spiritual bugs and the mold, the spiritual mold uh, that grows in our lives. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen? You know, when you expose yourself to the Son of God, whether it's in worship, whether it's in prayer, whether it's time in His Word, and so forth, His, his rays, the, the warmth of His rays, burn that stuff out in Jesus' name. All acorns contain this tannic acid, the tannin. Uh, as I said, white oaks contain very little, but the red oak acorns contain a lot. So, the good news is this, though, that tannic acid is water-soluble and can be easily removed by one of two processes. And here it is, either boiling or cold water flushing. Okay, let's talk about boiling. You ever feel like God's turning up the heat in your life? It, you, ever, you ever feel that? It's, it's only to remove the poisons, the, 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 the things that, that aren't glorifying Him. And these things will be removed if we submit to the process. Either trials and hardships and temptations will draw us closer to God or draw us away from God. Either they will make us better or what? Bitter. bitter right? And we want the bitterness to be taken out of our lives so we can be a witness, so we can be an instrument for God to use for people who are hungry and hurting. Amen? Amen? God uses the pressures of life to remove these spiritual poisons. But the process, but the success of this process depends on us. We can allow hardships to make us bitter or better. Now concerning this cold water flushing, at times the Word of God in the Bible is referred to as water. In Ephesians 5.25, let me read that to you. He says, husbands, any husbands in the house? Good. We got a few that confess that. Great. <laughs> Love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Jesus gave himself up for the church. Husbands, according to this, you're to give yourself up for your wife. Amen. I didn't write it, but it's right there. And because it's there, I must apply it. I need to give up myself for my wife. When we come home late at night and there's no dinner, and I want my dinner to be cooked first, I must lay myself, I must lay aside myself and cook my wife's dinner. Well, shouldn't she? Do? I don't care what she. What she should do is between her and God. I know what I must do. I know what I must do, and I don't do good things for her because she does good things for me. Even though she does, but that's not why. I do the things that I do because of this scripture: Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, and gave Himself up for her. You, you want your marriage to be successful? I know that there's, there's not, not everyone here is married, but do you want your marriage to be successful? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Give yourself up for her sake. Now, is there something for wives to do? Oh, absolutely. Wives, submit to and respect your husband. That means, wives, you respect your husband's spiritual authority. 
I didn't write this either, but the Bible says that the husband is head of the wife when it, when it talks about spiritual authority. That means he's in charge for your benefit, ladies. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Ladies? Amen. Now it's your turn, ladies. Amen. Okay. Oh, it, I love the Bible. It's, it's so balanced, isn't it? Nobody gets off the hook, as it were. But when the husband is loving the wife, as Christ loved the church, and the wife is submitting to her husband's authority as unto the Lord, you have a peaceful, harmonious, loving marriage. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and the reason marriages break up and divorce is so rampant is because these two things are not practiced. Non-believers don't even know about this, so there's no excuse. That's why, you know, many non-believers break up. But unfortunately, divorce is rampant in the, in the church, the church universal also. Right? The reason it is, the reason that that poison is in the church is because these things are not applied. When they are applied, marriages will be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay? Put that in your pot and boil it. The more God's word gets into us, the more it cleans us of spiritual poisons. It says here in, in Ephesians, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. So that's what God does for us. He washes us through his word. When you meditate on his word, when you hear his word taught, when you take it in, when you pay attention a little bit and just get what is, is trying to be communicated to you, when you take that in, meditate on it, your life is cleansed. That's what it says here, right? The washing with water through the word. That's the process of cold water flushing. Some things need to be flushed out of our lives. Amen? Amen. Okay. What else uh, does a tree produce? What else does a tree shade. provide? Shade. Oh, give me a shade tree in the heat of summer. Uh, in, in Matthew 13, I, I'm not going to read it all, but it, it talks about a tree that grows up and basically it's the kingdom of God and that tree has branches and in those branches birds come and perch itself to rest that's what we are as a people the kingdom of God is meant to be a place of refuge for the weary of the earth as part of the of that kingdom or church you are called to provide spiritual shelter right spiritual shelter or shade for the lost People are wandering around in a spiritual desert and they need an oasis. They need a place to come to. They need a place of hope and you've got that hope in Jesus' name. People are spiritually scorched. They need the cool shade of God's presence. I repeat, they need the cool shade of God's presence. In other words, they need hope. They need to know God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Your branches were meant to provide that shade, oak tree. You were made to help other people come to know and love God. And when it comes down to it, a tree is for the benefit of others, right? I want to be a tree. I want to be that tree by streams of water, right? Psalm chapter 1. You know, I want to be an oak of righteousness. But basically, a tree is for others. It's for others, right? Uh and, and one of the, the things that the tree provides is shade. But don't allow pride. Don't allow pride to come in because in Ezekiel chapter 31, I have it there in your notes, it speaks of a nation.